rent versus buy the old debate what will make me more money renting or buying should i buy a house or use that down payment to invest in stocks and rent instead this is such a touchy subject to talk about there's also so much to cover i'll be breaking this debate into two videos the quantitative which is right now and the qualitative which will be in another video everyone keeps asking about the money side but i think the non-financial side might be more important but more on that in another video please watch to the end of this video where I give two examples, one conservative hypothetical situation and then one real life example. I also have five separate answers to potentially five different scenarios. Let's quickly dive into the numbers. Setting up the scenario. If you see here, renting, I'm assuming $2,100, but where did I get that from? I found a property, London, Ontario. It is a four bed, four bath. If you look at the unit number, 1157, $2,180. This is my renting costs. What are my upfront costs? Zero. What are my monthly costs? The rent, $2,180 plus $25 tenant insurance. My monthly outflow is $2,205. That was easy. But do I know how much this house costs? Where did I get this $580,000 from? That's also easy. Where is it? I found the same house it sold earlier this year. I'll look at the number, 1157 in London. I hid, obviously, personal information, $580,000. I also have the taxes. So let's go through some numbers. $580,000. If you put 10% down, you have to pay mortgage insurance of $16,000. So my mortgage is $538,182. What are my upfront costs? $58,000 down payment. My land transfer tax, $29.75. Lawyer fees, closing costs. This gives me the total cash required to buy, $63,675. What are my monthly costs? Assuming a mortgage at 3%, I know some people are getting mortgages for 1.9 or 2.5, but that's too good to be true. Let's use, let's use a more conservative number. Let's use mortgage at 3%. Our mortgage is $2,269. Insurance, I found, I punched in this area code into an insurance calculator and I got $94. Property tax, 0.9%, 0 0.88% taken directly from the listing, 425 a month. My maintenance, this is 1% of the value of the house, which is $483 a month. Now you're probably wondering, what does $483 a month get me? Well, I broke it down over here. If we take 30 years of spending 483 a month, it's around $174,000. But what does that gives you? It gives you two roofs, two furnaces, two driveways, two water heaters. You can renovate your kitchen twice. You can renovate your bathroom twice. After all of that, you're left with $49,000 to adjust, fix, upgrade, anything other than what I just mentioned. If you need more than $174,000 on a house, maybe you just bought a lemon. Back to the numbers. If we look over here, one of the most important things are monthly outflow for buying. $3,272 compared to renting, which is $2,205. My monthly savings from renting over buying is $1,067, $1,067. Let's see what the value is after 30 years. Buying a house, assuming an annual growth rate of 3.5%, which has been, I think that's been the average growth, growth rate for the past 50 years in North America, my house value will be $1,627,940. Assuming selling costs of 5.65%, we are getting $1,500,000. One assuming this is your principal, this is probably going to be your principal residence, so there is no tax on it. There's no tax on principal residence in Canada. I'm assuming there's no tax in the US as well. Let's go through some numbers. For renting, the only reason you're doing this debate is you're saying, I would have taken that down payment and invested it instead. I would have taken my monthly savings and also invested that instead, instead of buying. So you have to take $63,000 and invest it, $1,067 and invest it. How did I get this portfolio value? Well, I used a calculator. Investment calculator, 
I put my starting amount, 63,000, my monthly amount, 1067. The average rate in the stock market over the last 100 years, 6.5%, 30 years to grow. This gives me $1,625,495. Now, it's very difficult to have this entire thing tax sheltered. If you put in your TFSA, there's no way you can put it because it's contribution limited. There's no way you could put a thousand a month in TFSA. There's no way you could put 63,000 in the TFSA. Even if you put in your RSP, which is tax deferred, once you withdraw that money, you have to pay tax. Assuming a low tax rate of 20%, your portfolio value is 1.3 million. Let's take a look at the values before selling. Oh, yeah, we can't really take a value before selling costs and pre-tax. But under no scenario, under no situation, would we have to use these two values over here. So using this hypothetical scenario, buying beats renting by $235,000, $566. Now you're probably thinking, if you're on the buy side, you're probably thinking, hey, we've gotten a better return than this. We don't get 3.5%. Ontario, BC, and some places in the US get around 7%. But look what happens when I put in 7%. $4 million. This is too good to be true. This is impossible. We're just in a bull run right now. So I'm not using 7%. That's unrealistic. What can we derive from this? The simple answer. The renter has more cash per month compared to a buyer. That's clear to see here. The simpler answer. Buying makes more money than renting over the long term. That's clear in almost every scenario. Let's take a look at this number. If you buy and hold after 30 years, due to the leverage factor, you will have more money. The complicated answer. Renting makes more money than buying if you move two or more times. Now, what does this mean? When you buy, there are buying costs around one to one and a half percent. When you sell, there are selling costs, like almost 6%, maybe seven. So if we take this, and we assume you move three times every 10 years. What is your value after 30 years? Let's say 21% total buying and selling costs. All of a sudden you lose, look at this. Renting makes more money than buying around $14,000. A small amount, but still an item to consider. The more complicated answer. Buying makes more money than renting even if you move twice, but don't invest your excess rental cash into the stock market. Take a look at this number right here. The only way renting makes close to as much money as buying is if you take this excess rental and you invest it in the stock market. Let's play around with this scenario. If you see here, if I invest zero of my monthly amount, what happens to my returns after 10 years, after 30 years, $445,000. Let's put that number here, 445. I'm losing by a million dollars. Let's say we invest half of it, $500 a month instead of the thousand, $998,000. We're still losing. Let's say we invest 75% of it, $1,274,000, $1,274,000. We're still losing. the most complicated answer. It all depends on your situation, your city, your tax rate, how much you invest, how much you can save, and what house you buy. Let's move on to a real life example. This was my house. I bought a house 10 years ago, sold it. This is the real life experience. If I was to rent this house, it was $1,500 a month. Tenant insurance, assuming $25, the monthly outflow for renting, 1525 Now I have the exact numbers here for buying because these are my numbers. I bought it for $375,000 in 2010. 5% down plus insurance. My mortgage was $368,000. My down payment, again, 5%. Land transfer tax because this was my first house. Majority of it was rebated. Lawyer costs. The cash required to buy this house, $21,550. My mortgage at 3.9%, which was 10 years ago. My insurance, $75. Property tax, 
275. Maintenance, 234. So my monthly outflow is 2,238 compared to the 1525. So if I was to rent, I would have savings of $713. Let's see the value after 10 years. The value after 10 years right here, we have it, $792,000. I backed into this number. I didn't make up this number. I bought the house for 375. I did sell it for 792. Selling costs, assuming 5.65%, less my mortgage, cash on hand after tax. Well, no tax because it was principal residence, $462,000. What would have happened if I rented instead? Using the same spreadsheet, the same calculator that I used last time, assuming we put 21,000 down and we invest 700 a month. Let's take a look. 21,000 down, additional contribution, I used 10%. The last 10 years, the S&P 500 has grown at around 10%, so that's what I'm using. So my total portfolio value would have been 204,000. Assuming a 20% tax rate, 163,000. I made $298,000 more than I would have if I invested. Let's take a look at how the leverage factor takes kicks in the total cash invest into a house. What does this mean? So here I put $21,000, but my monthly outflow was 2,200. So I've taken my down payment plus 120 months, which is 10 years of my monthly outflow. Every penny that went into this house, $290,000. My return, $462,000. Someone please tell me if I'm doing this wrong. It seems too good to be true. My annual return on investment, 15.93%. The only reason this, this happened is because my growth rate on a leveraged amount. I put in a low amount and the rest was mortgage. It was 95% mortgage. Now I know, I know what you're thinking. I've invested at the best time and in the best place to get the best results. So this is biased. I could have just invested in Tesla and gotten, let's take a look, Tesla, in the last 10 years, 7,945%. It's exactly 10 years, this is the perfect stock to use. Where this argument falls apart, millions of people in North America are willing to bet, buy a house and live in it for 10 years. How many people would have bought Tesla 10 years ago, only invested in Tesla and have sold 10 years later? So that's where this argument falls apart. The majority of people buy a diversified portfolio. That's why no one gets 7,900% gains over 10 years. The average gains would have been around 10%. If you did, you're very lucky and also very stupid. I wouldn't recommend to anyone to have one stock in their portfolio and only invest in it every month. So that I'm not buying that argument. What can we derive from this? The, sim the biased answer. Buyers in the last 10 years maybe even 15 years, have made way more money than renters. That's true in almost every scenario, unless you bought a house that was tearing down and falling apart. The sensible answer. Buyers have experienced a too good to be true bull run and can't expect this to last forever. There's no way this is gonna be going up 7.7% a year. We've experienced something too good to be true. It won't last this long and that's fine. The annoying answer. The qualitative points of the rent versus buy debate are more relevant in my mind to determine whether or not to buy or rent in your city, in your scenario, in your situation, which is what we'll talk about in the next video. Thanks guys.